Hi everybody, welcome to Stamping with Melva. I'm Melva Peters and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in British Columbia, Canada. And you can find me online at stampingwithmelva.com. Today I wanted to show you how to make a magic slider card. Now, this uh, card that I'm making is not the card that I shared in the blog hop um, that was part uh, that was posted um, today, but it is, uh, it's the same technique. So this card that I shared is actually a, a portrait card that pulls out from the top. I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, the card I'm going to make and show you is um, a landscape card and it pulls from the side. The, the technique is exactly the same. It's just which way you you have your your um, cardstock or your designer series paper facing and which way you stamp your images. So really exactly the same um, process, the technique to make these cards um, just different orientation. All right, let me switch over and I'm gonna show you the card that I shared as part of the blog hop today, which is the, I've used the friendly gnomes. So this is the magic slider card. And so I've used the flowers and more designer series paper from, this is the host um, paper. Uh, this is from uh, the host, one of the host papers from the um, mini catalog, uh, current mini catalog. And so this is it, and this is the friendly gnomes. And what a magic slider card is, when you pull it out, get it, there we go. So it's kind of just black and white on the front, but when you pull it out, it's magic, look, color. So I want to show you how to put this together. Now it's a little bit of work, um, but it's not hard once you kind of get the idea of what you're going to do. So today I'm going to use, instead of the friendly gnomes, I'm going to use the Rhino Ready. And I'm going to use another piece of this paper from the Flowers and More. I'm using the pattern one. Um, and I'm using the, uh, the stripe. This is Parakeet Party or Granny Apple Green, not sure. And then the Rhino Ready stamp set. These rhinos are so cute. This is one of the online exclusives. Um, is a bundle, comes with the dies. We don't need the dies for this. We're just going to use the stamps. All right, so the first thing you need is a piece of designer series paper that is five and a half by 12. And we're gonna score this along the 12 inch side at four inches, make sure you're scoring, about four inches and eight inches. So this is the card base. So our card base is made out of designer series paper. And then on one of the two ed outside edges, we're gonna trim just a sliver off one eighth inch. So I'm just gonna take and just trim um, an eighth of an inch off that one end. It just makes the the card base of the designer series paper turn um, on itself easier. All right, I'm done with our trimmer for the moment. Okay, so what we can do now is use your bone folder and fold on, that's the side that I trimmed, so you'll be able to tell that. It just folds on itself and just kind of reduces some of the bulk. So I've put that to the inside. So our card, this is our card and mine's gonna go like this. So this was my, my portrait card that pulled from the top. This one we're gonna pull um, from the right hand side. So the first thing we want to do is we want to put some kind of opening in it. So figure out what stamp set you're going to use, how big it is. Um, so I've got this little cute little rhino um, that's got the little bird on his back. And so I'm also going to use the stamp that says it's a great day. So what I want to do is find, I'm going to use the stitched rectangle. So I'm going to find a rectangle that's big enough for my rhino. Now that's just barely big enough for the rhino. So we're probably going to go one size bigger than that. Because I want to do the rhino plus... Um, let's do it like this so that I can actually see how, where it fits. So I want to do the rhino. And then if I have room, I might do the sentiment as well. Just barely. If I don't fit the sentiment on, that's okay. We'll just put the rhino in. Okay, so unfold this so you're not cutting through all three layers. We just want to cut through uh, one layer of this designer series paper. 
And we're gonna just take, I'm gonna use a little po piece of post-it note tape on both ends of this to hold this in place. Get it kind of lined up. If it's not quite in the middle, it's not a problem. All right, so I'm just gonna bring in my stamp and cut and emboss machine. I got a whole bunch of bits on it from the card I made earlier. So let's get those off. Let's get these the little bits from the die cuts that stick around. All right, so I'm gonna put that in like that. Yeah, and that's second plate number three. And we're gonna run this through. This is going to create my opening for oof, that makes a lot of noise, and I can't turn it turn it uh, on the angle which will reduce the noise and make it easier to run through okay so that's all I need that for so these are stitched so they're kind of sticking a little bit because of the stitching so gently pull those pull this off pull out the, the die cut piece and we're left with the opening now you can save this piece um, and use it on another card. I'm going to actually use it as a bit of a template. So now we've got, that's our card base. Isn't that pretty paper around the inside? Okay, so that's our template. And this rhino, actually, I think there's going to be lots of room for my sentiment as well. Okay, so we have our card base. Um, and I noticed mine's not quite even. It's a little bit um, wider at the bottom. And that's perfectly fine. While... No, we'll do that in a minute. Okay, so now the next piece is, where's my rest of my supplies here? So let's work on the insert that when you pull it out, um, you end up with the color and then this piece of basic white that's on the inside. So the piece of basic white that goes on the inside, oh, I need my trimmer one more time. So this is cut five and a quarter sorry yeah four and a quarter by five and a quarter and we're going to score it at three eighths of an inch now if you're not used to eighths on the trimmer this in each one inch it's marked in sixteenths so you want um and then so every lot every line is one sixteenth so you actually need six of the lines to get one uh three eighths of an inch and I hope I haven't confused you, but I do know that there are people that deal with metric more than they deal with imperial. And when I talk in eighths of an inch, um, it definitely kind of confuses them. Okay, so we've got our piece and we've scored it at three eighths of an inch down one side. So this is down the, the four and a quarter inch side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some tear and tape um, adhesive. You can use liquid glue, but tear and tape is much less messy. So just put some, some tear and tape down one edge, down that edge. And now we're going to put this on the inside. Which side did I cut off? There we go, the inside. Okay, so we've got our opening and it's going to go like this. So we're going to have it, we have the, I'm going to, my little wider, because it's just a touch wider um, I'm going to put this strip um, at the top. I'm just checking my card to see which way I put it in there. Yeah. Okay. So that was to the front. So we're going to just take off. Now, one trick you can use with tear and tape if you're worried about kind of, because once it sticks, it sticks. So just kind of take it, peel it back and fold it. And now we're going to take and line this up so now you're not worrying about um, having this kind of sticking as you go there's only about an inch showing of the tape you want this so my card is going to pull out this way from the from the right hand side out so you want this piece to be as close to the bottom as you can get it so this is my right side now that i've turned it over so i'm going to put this lined up with this score line and pretty close to the bottom of my card base. So kind of in the middle, but lined up with that edge. Just once you get it in place, it doesn't have to be perfect. Hold it in place and then you can kind of gently peel the rest of the tear and tape off. And now we have 
our uh, piece on the inside, which is going to help with the the mechanism for the the um, you know the magic part of this. So this is our mechanism. If I pulled it out on your card, your this piece will not pull out because we're going to put a stopper in there. But this is this is going to be the mechanism. And so we've got our base ready. Now let's start with this one. What you need is two pieces. You need a piece of window sheet that is three and a half by five and a quarter. And you need a piece of basic white that is exactly the same size. So three and a half by five and a quarter. Um, and so what we're going to do with this is we're going to stamp. Now you need to use stays on ink. Stays on is a permanent ink. Um, when you use this on your um, stamps, you do also need to use stays on cleaner because if you don't, um, it will permanently stain your um, your rubber stamps and your photopolymer stamps. So make sure you've got some stays on ink and then also stays on um, the, the remover. Stay on ink and the remover. Okay. So if you have a Stamparatus, yes. Almost dropped my trimmer. If you have a Stamparatus, definitely pull it out. If you don't have a Stamparatus, well, you're going to need to figure out how you can do um, some positioning. So I'm going to take those magnets out, not get them too close. I don't need that. If you use photopolymer stamps, you need to use the, the foam mat, but because I am using a rubber stamp, you don't have to. And I'm going to have to cut another piece of my basic white because I've got some of the stays on. Um, on it. So let me just grab some basic white. The stays on ink or the stays on cleaner is a solvent. And so it definitely kind of leaves, a, I'm going to say a greasy mark on your paper. If you, if you touch your paper up against um, your your um the stays on you will get a kind of a greasy mark so i'm going to try not to do that what did i say i said three and a half by five and a quarter so let's cut this to three and a half by five and a quarter there we go okay so i'm going to put this in make sure you figure out where you want it to, to you know you've got the grid lines to line up your your paper with and i'm going to put my magnets down now my card is going this way right so i'm going to kind of just eyeball this like that so if you use this piece as a bit of a template you will be able to get a sense of where where your trying to line this up where your piece um, needs to go so if i put this in the middle which is kind of where i cut cut my um cut this from so i'm going to just use this as a template and then i'm going to figure out where i want my my stamps now if i use one big i don't need a stamp i don't need the block so I'm, Okay, so what you because because I've got the platform so I'm going to just kind of line up there we go line up my rhino I want my rhino to be walking I want to make sure his feet are on the ground hopefully that's about right looking to see okay there we go and let's see do I have room for this I move him down a little bit I might have room for my my sentiment okay let's make sure I've got my sentiment going I do going the right way move him down a little bit so this is kind of the you know, I'm gonna say this is probably the trickiest part is just to get your stamps lined up get them on now I'm gonna put this back here and I am now going to ink up my, my stamps with my stays on. Let me turn it this way so you can actually see. And I'm going to do a test because I've still got my piece of, of um, designer series paper that I is the same size as my 
my cutout and I'm just going to make sure that it's kind of in the right place. This, I don't think it is. So let's kind of move. I'm just going to kind of move it in a, up a little bit. Once you have this, you're good to go. Okay, I'm going to, I'm thinking that's pretty good. We'll stamp it and see. Pull it off. So that's pretty good. That's that's pretty close. You can, I, I didn't do a good job of stamping, but it's pretty close to where I want it to go. I just need to kind of straighten up my piece of basic white. It's not, it's kind of crooked. Use your grid lines. Okay, so now let's ink this up a little better. So we're going to stamp this on this piece of basic white. This is the one we're going to color. Now you can use your palm of your hand. I have this little bottle jar that I've got some, I put a, one of those felt um, upholstery pads that you put under furniture on it and I use it. So that's a great, that's really good stamped, nice and clear. Okay, so before you move anything, you wanna take your piece of clear, the, the window sheet, and you're gonna put it down right over top of your stamped uh, basic white because we want this window sheet image and I just moved it that's not good I think I just shifted it off the line so that's okay there we go and I'm just gonna make sure pretty good okay so we've got our window sheet exactly over top of our basic white and now we're gonna re-ink our rhino and our sentiment. And if I did this right, fingers crossed, this image that is now stamped on the, the window sheet is right over top. Oof, pretty good. Okay, so now I can take this off. Now this takes a minute to dry, so don't get your fingers on it. And you, if you want to on the acetate, um, you can actually take the heat tool but because we're going to just let this um, dry, we're going to do some coloring. So we want to color our rhino. We're just going to let our, our window sheet um, dry. So I'll close up our stays on because we're done with that. And I will clean off mine. Now I grabbed a uh, Smoky Slate uh, So Saffron and Granny Apple Green. And I just want to grab Chrome Cake. And that's what we'll do our coloring with. Let's see, I think I want a light crumb cake. Okay, so let's do the coloring of our, our Rhino first. So I'm when I color using my Stampin' Blends, if you've watched me color before, I always kind of go over the entire image using the light color, whichever is your lightest. It doesn't have to be exactly the same color. So in this case, I'm using light and dark smoky slate. Um, but you could decide to, you know, switch it up. You could use, say, light crumb cake and dark, I don't know, early espresso or or um, soft suede. So it doesn't, they don't always have to be the same color that you're using and coloring with. In this case, I'm going to use smoky slate for my rhino. But I'm going to go over the entire image in smoky slate, the light color, the light of the two. I just like to get kind of a base coat of, of the uh, blend, the alcohol marker on it. And I find it easier once I have this to then put the, the darker one on for shading and then go back over it with the light. Okay, so now we've got our dark, so now I'll go, or so our light, now we'll take, and I'm just gonna use the, the fine tip end on this one and just kind of add some, and I'm really using where the concept artist has got some of these lines in. You don't have to do much thinking with this when they give us kind of lines where it might be a little bit shadowed. Oh, and I'm gonna do his ears dark, just because. And you could do his mouth 
as well. There we go. So I'm just doing that. And then I'm going to go over again using the, the brush end and just kind of blend those so that it's not quite so obvious um, where I did my kind of blending. Rhinos are kind of, I don't know, they always look like they've got dirt on them. Now, apparently there's actually a name for this little bird, and I can't remember what it is, but rhinos, I have been told, have very poor eyesight. And so they have these little birds that follow them everywhere. And I was sure I had... I'm going to use crumb cake. Um, they follow them everywhere. They actually are on their back and they help them protect them against predators. So I thought that was interesting, but somebody told me that on the live one day when I was using this rhino set and she actually knew the name. I'm sorry. I can't remember who that was. She actually knew the name of the, the little bird, something pecker. I can't remember what it was. All right, so then I'm going to color the little bird in So Saffron. Probably should have used Daffodil Delight, but anyway, I didn't don't have any. So just a little. Now, I want to put some grass. I just don't want him kind of, you know, he looks like he's floating on air. So I'm just going to put some. This is the light granny apple green. So I'm just going to kind of go and just put some grass under him like this just so it doesn't look like he's floating on air there we go all right so that's our coloring so now what we need to do and this should be dry by now if you're worried about that being um, still a little wet um, take your heat tool and just kind of um, give it a shot of heat like that and just make sure it's dry Okay, so what we want to do is we want to line these two up perfectly so that the the stamped image, the stamped image on the, the window sheet is right over top of the stamped image that we've just colored. So the other thing that we need is something to hold these together. And so I've got a little, I've got a scrap here of Granny Apple Green and I've got my stitched um, stylish shapes dies. And I'm using the second largest of the stitched circles. And I'm just going to cut one of these out. I meant to do it before. This is going to be our tab on, um, on those two pieces to hold them together. Like that. And while you're at it, since we're cutting this out. So I said that, yeah, that's the way. I want to just take and make a little tab in here. And I'm going to use the same die. So I'm just going to fold that in on itself and kind of position this in the middle. Now, in my case, because my, my rectangle is a little bigger than, than what you might be using, um, it isn't going to be kind of half. But I would say if you can, um, Position it so that you've got cut, really you're cutting half a circle um, in your designer series paper. And I'm just going to run that through while I have my my die here. If you have a punch, you could use a punch to do that. Um, but since I've used, I've got the style of shapes, I've now got my little tab and it's got stitching on it. So that's even better. Okay. So we've got that. So that's going to be, help us to grab our, the magic part of this. Okay. So this is our card base. I'm just going to use, if I can find my bone folder. There it is. I'm just going to use my bone folder and just give it a really good burnish on these edges. Okay, so there's our card base. Now, again, we want to line these up. We also want to cut, or not cut, um, score our little circle in half. So you just roughly, it doesn't have to be exact. So I've just kind of put it in my trimmer so that the it's equal distance from both edges. And I'm just going to run my scoring blade across. And I didn't do a good job of that, but that's okay. 
it's perfectly fine. So we'll fold it and I'll put the, the smaller one. It's not going to show anyway. I'm going to put the smaller one um, at the back. So now we want to take, and if you have a little clip um, somewhere, I have a clip. So if you've got a clip, clip the end. So put it in exactly so that the, the window sheet is perfectly aligned over top of the colored one. Um, and then you can, um, that holds it in place. Now, I'm going to use stamp and seal. You could use liquid glue, but I have been finding that I'm kind of messy with my liquid glue. And when you get liquid glue on top of your window sheet, it's almost impossible to get it off. So um, I'm going to use stamp and seal. What you want to do is position this in half or equal distance so that these two pieces, so I put glue on the front and the back of this little tab. Um, and so now these, these two pieces are now glued together with the the um, the stamped image, the outlined image, right over top of the the uh, colored image. Now this piece, if you open your card base up, is going to go down. So this is my front of my card. You're going to split this. So the the window sheet is going to go to the front and the um, colored image is going to go to the back. So it's going to be like that. So it perfectly shows up. And now if I just hold this in place, when you pull, you will now get the magic happening because we've got our clear image. You can see it's, it's not colored and then it's colored. What we want to do though is put something on it so it doesn't fall out. So the way, if you don't put it, this piece will pull right out of your card. So I've got two pieces of basic white and I'm probably gonna trim these because I've got my, um, I've got my stamped um, images quite close. Now I cut these three quarters of an inch by I think four and a quarter. I'm gonna trim them to half an inch just because of where I ended up stamping. So you can kind of adjust these. Really, this is just to kind of stop the, we're gonna create a stopper at the top. Um, and this is gonna be the bottom of the stopper on the edge, the bottom end of our card. So we want these two pieces to be just slightly bigger. So I'm gonna use, um, I'm going to use them the way they are. So I've got them half inch and they're they're longer than I need. But for the moment, I'm just going to take and I'm going to use stamp and seal. And I'm going to apply them to eat the very bottom edge of my acetate and then turn it over and I'm going to apply it to the very bottom edge of the back of my card a uh, back of this um, the colored images and then you can take and trim them because of course I didn't get them to be the same the same length so I'm going to trim them so that they're about mm, just over just under a quarter of an inch longer I may need to trim them a little bit more um, hold them in place because I clearly haven't been, let's get them lined up and then turn. Okay, so what we want to do, so now we've got, this is going to go, remember this, the window sheet goes to the front of our basic white piece and the colored goes to the back. Now we need to figure out how we actually hold this in place because what we want to do is create some stoppers so that when you pull on your the magic part, the, the middle, the piece that pulls out, it gets to the top and won't go any further. So I'm gonna put this in, get it lined up for where I want it. It's just pretty good in the middle. And I'm gonna just use dimensionals. I'm gonna use mini dimensionals and I'm actually gonna just cut pieces, mini dimensionals. So if you take a piece, like there's an edge here. So just take, and you're just gonna take, and you could use a mini dimensional. I just find it easier. I'm gonna cut maybe three quarters of an inch off the edge. 
and cut that in half. And we're gonna just peel the backing off. You only wanna peel the backing off of one edge. And you're gonna put this right at the top so that when when the this bottom gets to the top, I don't know if you can see that. So I've got my little dimensional right there at the top. Um, it will not pull out. This is going to stop it. So I'm just gonna put that right like there. That, okay. So now when I go to pull this out, she says confidently, except that I, my dimensional backing is pulled off. Okay, so when I go to pull this out, it gets to the top and it won't come any further. And then you can slide it back in. All right, now we can just glue the back of our card together. I'm gonna to use liquid glue or uh, stamp and seal just because that's what I've got out. You could use liquid glue. And I'm only gluing the back. I'm not gluing the bottom. I'm gonna put something on the bottom. Okay, there we go. There's our card, um, pulls out like this. And it's, of course, it's stuck to this dimensional and it's not supposed to be. There we go. There is the magic happening. Isn't that cool? I just think that's so cool. So you could, you could entertain um, a child forever. Now, I'm going to try and take and put a little piece of basic white. If your backing comes off of your dimensional, take, where's my tweezers? Take a little piece of basic white and stick over top of it. And that way you won't have the issue of it um, coming off. There we go. And kind of unsticking. And in fact, I think it's better to put some basic white cardstock on it that is the same width um, as, or a little bit bigger as, as your, um, as that dimensional piece. And that way this is stuck and it won't come off and stick because it's what I was having happening. The backing of the dimensional came off and then it was um, sticking as it was pulling out. All right, so there we go. Let's grab this if I can grab this. Okay, for some reason I can't get a hold of it. Okay, pull out. You can do it. I'm not sure why it's stuck. There we go. I'm not sure why it was stuck. Anyway, there we go. Now we've got the magic happening again. All right, just don't want to get too close to the thing. Okay, all right, so you can finish the bottom. I cut a piece of um, granny apple green that is four inches. I cut this an inch and a half. I think I'm gonna trim it down to an inch and then score it in half. So again, that's only because I ended up with the, the, um, this, the rectangle. My rectangle is bigger than what I was expecting it to be. So kind of gauge what you want this to be. This is just kind of gonna hold the, I don't wanna cut it, I wanna score it. This is gonna hold the bottom. If you don't have a problem with the bottom, being open um, and not sealed closed, then you don't have to do this. But I kind of like that detail on the bottom. So I'm just going to take, so this is an inch by four and just fold it in half. I scored it in half. Now, you don't want to really tightly put this on. I'm just going to try and loosely adhere this, if that makes sense, um, so that it doesn't stick. But this will just give you something to be able to grab onto. And again, I'm going to use stamp and seal. You could use tear and tape adhesive if you want to, um, but I'm just going to take stamp and seal and I'm just going to apply this kind of like this so that the score is in the middle. That's, and I may have to trim this. So we'll do. And if you used tear and tape adhesive like I showed you, um, there we go. Uh, you could use that trick where you only pull part of it off. All right, so there we go. That's our card. So let's see. We should be able to. There we go. Isn't that fun? Oh my God. And if you wanted to, you could stamp something on there because then there would be double the magic. But there's the magic happening where it goes from being black and white to being colored. And people will go, wow, how did you do that? Now, if you want to, you could take and put something. Um, I put some ribbon on here. Now I meant to 
um, actually punch through that before I um, put it through. But I'm going to take my piercing tool. I don't think my punch will go through all of these layers. So I'm just going to take my piercing tool and punch a hole. And then, oh, it's probably going to have to be a bigger hole than that. There we go. All right. And then I've got, this is um, old olive ribbon. And I thought it would go through nice or go nicely with this. So I've punched through. This is actually going through four layers, which is why I thought my punch wouldn't work. So if you do want to put a hole in it, probably punch the individual layers first. So I'm just going to poke that through with my take your pick tool. I can grab it. There we go. I think I got it. There we go. Grab it. All right. So I cut that off and then I'm just going to tie a bow. My other card I used, I can find it. I have to fix the, the stopper. My other card I used the woven ribbon. I find that's coming off. So I'm going to try and tie this one in a knot. Um, I think I'm just going to tie this in a double knot and that way it won't it won't kind of work its way loose, which is what's happening on my other card. And then we'll trim this. This just gives you something to be able to pull, pull on. There we go. Again, ta-da! Isn't that fun? Oh my gosh, it's been a long time since I made one of these. <laughs> I realized how fun. Now, embellishments, because of course we need some embellishments. I love these little brass. These are brushed brass butterflies. Say that three times fast. And I just thought having some butterflies on um, the front of our card would be fun. There we go. And if you wanted to, um, you probably want to put the sentiment on the back. You could put some basic white on the back of it. You could put something um, down the front if you wanted some more decoration. But I think I'm happy with the way it turned out. Um, again, there we go. Magic. Isn't that fun? Um, and then I will fix this one so that um, it, it actually doesn't pull out like it, it did. I think using the dimensionals with just some basic white on top of it, um, I think will work. I think what was happening is my dimensionals were pulling apart because the backing um, was coming off. But there's that card. So that's the tall, the tall, um, the portrait card pulled from the top and then the landscape card pulled out from the side. Okay, so if you have any questions, um, you can hop over to my blog and find all of the written instructions and measurements for this uh, card. The measurements are exactly the same. You can decide on which orientation you want, whether you want it landscape or portrait. Um, you could pull it from the I guess, well, you could pull it from the bottom too, or the left side, up to you how you want to make this card work. Um, so if you have questions as you're following along, just leave a comment either on my blog or on this YouTube video, and I'm happy to answer them. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you get notified when I post my other videos. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining you, so joining me. I hope you have fun making this magic slider card. Happy stamping. Bye.